do please to be able to show it to all of you tonight. What? Traditionally, Europe produces the world's race walking champion, but here in the foothills of the Rockies, Curtis is using science to win. Okay, coming up on 30 seconds into it. Gonna go three minutes after Physiologist Dr. Steve Fleck. When you start to build up blood lactic acid, that's a waste product from anaerobic metabolism. As the blood lactic acid becomes higher, you will start to feel fatigue. You'll start to get that needle and pins feeling in your fingers and toes. And essentially, as a distance athlete, when you build up blood lactic acid, you've essentially signed your own death warrant. You will eventually have to slow the pace. The idea is to predict at what point you'll develop blood lactic acid and then prescribe training paces to either make it later in the race or later in the, at a faster speed so that he does not develop it as much. That's one thing that's going on here, finding out just where Curtis's training or anaerobic threshold lies. Lactic acid, the marker for fatigue, shows up in the blood. But there's another training factor. When Curtis works out among the magnificent rocks thrown up on the fault line below Pike's Peak, he's training in altitudes over a mile high. Physiologists haven't reached a consensus on whether high-altitude training is beneficial for endurance competitors. It's a controversial issue in sports science. What is known is that some athletes use oxygen much more efficiently than others do. And the idea here is to test the economy of oxygen use and then push through training to a faster pace with less oxygen consumption. We join Curtis to see how this science is put to practical use. So we've seen you on the treadmill. How do you then apply that knowledge, what you've learned there, to improve your performance? Well, I'm wearing a heart rate monitor here. So that monitors your heartbeat. Yeah, that's picking up my heart rate.